Hey everybody, this is Rich and you're with Beekeeping with Rich. We're in mad scientist mode this morning. Um, I did a video on my steam extractor setup. You can look back and see that video. But I didn't do a live video of it because I didn't have any wax to extract. We did a cutout last week and I had some comb left over and I had some pieces of comb from some work I had done in the hive. So yesterday we did a video on the boiling method of extracting wax, wrapping it in a bag. And if you'll go back and check that video towards the end, I was breaking up the slum gum and there was all of these little pellets, little BB size pieces of beeswax still in all the slum gum. So I decided to go ahead and use the steam extractor and you will see now why I've gone to the steam extractor instead of the old boiling method. Because minus the can, the dog food can that was sticking up in the middle of it, this is the wax that we got on the surface using the boiling method. All the rest of the wax was trapped inside the slum gum. So now we have a bag suspended inside this steamer. I will turn off the steamer here now so that in a moment we can take the lid off. But the steamer doesn't have an on off switch. You simply pull the plug. I do want to mention that the instructions for the steamer are extremely clear about the fact that you are not to use an extension cord with the cord of the steamer. You're supposed to just plug it in where it is and never use an extra. And I, of course, had to try that. And the uh, extension cord heated up so much that I very quickly decided, you know, they probably know what they're talking about. And so I only plug it in to the outlet. So we'll give this a minute so that when I open it, I don't get a blast of steam in my face. <laughs> so at any rate, though, if you will look, all of that wax was captured still inside the slum gum. I did change one thing instead of using the bag with the super super fine mesh made from a piece of uh, window shear i did go ahead and grab a standard paint strainer bag which is a much more open mesh compared to that when it's like 600 micron uh, and moved every stirred everything up moved it over into that bag and hung that bag inside here so when we open this you will see it's a coarser bag it's going to let larger um, particles of uh, wax float through uh, well, you don't know how dangerous this thing really is dear <laughs> to do anything other than let it cool so the reason that there is a scale here is that's looking like a pretty good portion of wax. One of the nice things about it is steam. Yeah, steam may be above 212 degrees, but once the heat inside gets up around 170 or so, the wax melts, falls down to the bottom, flows out and hits the water that's collecting from the steam, but it's cool. So the wax itself never gets up hot enough to discolor or anything. As you can see, it's a beautiful yellow color with only the smallest particles of uh, detritus in it. Gonna I'm going to weigh them. But I just want everybody who checks the other video will remember this. They just picture a dog food can there.
Turn this on. What is it? It is. You have it on. I have it on grams, grams. 102 grams. Let's, let's take it over. Press again. There we go. So we have three and five eighths ounces of wax there. Or 102. Or 102 grams. Now I'm going to be checking these to see if there's any water pockets in them because that's been known to happen. Yeah, see, don't want to falsify my data here. Yeah, that's solid. There's some water. And of course, it's cool art all in itself. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to falsify anything here. Boy, it'd be really dramatic. Oh, look, we got a pound and a half on the other stuff. And it's like, no, you don't want to do that. Ah, there's some water. There's some water. You're going to have to take all that wax off and redo it. It timed out on you. That's okay. We'll just do that. Okay. Get back to grams. Yep. Yeah. Well, already okay. Now you'll see why I consider it to be worth the investment, given that I have other uses for a steamer, as well as doing this, why I felt it was worth the investment. It's six and an eighth, or six and a, yeah. Six and an eighth, and before we were what? Three and five eighths. Three and five eighths. So it's almost double. Yep. Yeah. We got a much better harvest. Three and five eighths to six and an eighth, because the steam just allows it to flow out. Now and the it's, color of the wax looks cleaner. Oh yeah, yeah, because there's a lot more fine particles from the you dirt and stuff. Oh, change. what what my wife just observed was how much more brightly yellow the wax was here, how much cleaner it was. This stuff, I mean, that water that this was boiling in was quite a dirty brown. And I will take all of this wax and I will take this wax and I will put it in that finest mesh bag that we have, the one made from the other, and I will run it through here again to get it really nice and clean. And then but, the final step is putting it in the solar oven? No, no, won't need to. Uh, oh, she asked me if I was going to put it in the solar oven next. And the answer is no, no, this will be more than clean enough this way to uh, be processed into blocks. Okay, so. Are you gonna do a video about how you process it into blocks? Well, that's really not worth doing. You okay. melt, it in, melt it in a little double boiler and you pour it into a silicon mold. Uh, so, let's, uh, yeah, we'll just break it out over here on the table. I have to clean the table anyway. This is actually a uh, paint strainer bag for a two gallon bucket, which is a good fit for inside of here, as opposed to the five gallons, which leaves me a whole lot of extra material dangling around. Mm 
but you can see the yellow tint at the edges. There's always going to be some wax that's going to kind of adhere. But other than what was at the very bottom, on the very outside, everything that was in through the middle, you see how much less in the way of little BBs and bits and such of wax there are. I mean, obviously, I'll, I'll, there's always going to be some bits of wax left over. You can't do this forever. But uh, just wanted to show you how efficient the steam system is as compared to the boiling system for bringing the wax out of the slum gum. And now we have something that will make a great additive for gardening, potting soil and such. And that's how I use it. And it works out quite well. So this was just a little part two from what we did yesterday and also a part two from the demonstration of the way I whipped up a little steamer unit using some nuke boxes. So refer back to the steam, refer back to the steam, steam video. video and you'll see how it was constructed. I mean, I can deconstruct it. Just two five frame nukes. Here's a piece on the bottom, which is nothing more than a shim in which you nail a piece of metal on three sides. Don't nail it on the fourth side. There'll always be enough flex. There's the peg with some wax on the back of it that you just stick in there. And wax just drips down here, heats up and flows out. And I just incorporated this as a tilt. You don't have to do that. You can have your metal there and you can just put a piece of wood on the back. Just, I mean, not attached. You can just stick a piece of wood underneath here to tip it slightly forward. You didn't need to do all this. I just wanted that extra stability. But you don't have to, you know, all you need is a metal piece on a piece of shim for a five frame and you've got yourself a steamer. And the steamer. And the steamer itself. As I said, this one was purchased online because it's strictly supposed, it was mostly sold for wood bending, for steam heating and bending wood. You can buy the exact same steamer unit with tools and accessories at Home Depot or Lowe's. Exact same unit, uh, but this one has a cutoff. So I, like yesterday, I turned the, I, I filled it up, turned it on, and I left. I came back, it was cold because it had boiled down to this much water, at which point it cut itself off. This morning, I set everything back up, turned it back on, and completed the process with one complete fill of water plus a partial fill of water to bring us to the point where we did the video. Uh, whereas I think the one that they sell in Home Depot, uh, you just have to monitor yourself to make sure it doesn't run dry and you burn it out. I think that's I think that's why it's less expensive. And you don't get anything from them. Oh, no, I don't get anything from Home Depot <laughs> or from the company that makes these. Right. So this is not this is this is not a commercial endorsement. Uh, this is just a nice little home unit that a lot of people have found useful for steaming things like the arms on uh, homemade bows and things like that and canes and whatever. So that's it. This is Rich. This is beekeeping with Rich. This is processing a bit of wax from last week's cutout, and uh, y'all have a great day and a great rest of the week. Bye now.